Welcome back to Raw Thoughts on Thoughts from the Bench. I'm John Fisher, your resident Raw host and reviewer. And depending on how much makeup my producer gives me, I'm really good looking. This is going to be a good week. Let's get right to number five. And that is Woken Matt Hardy. No, I'm not going to do the laugh because I understand how long a meme is supposed to last as far as time. His segment with Bray Wyatt, he finally got into the ring, beat Kurt Hawkins. They feel bad for the guy. He's 0 and 100 and... 1,084. He'll get a win someday. But let's focus on the two uh, evil monsters that were in the ring. They didn't do anything. They laughed. A lot. And then they cut to black. Matt Hardy finally wrestled, and that's great. That's what he needed to do. Bray Wyatt barged in after the match, which is also wonderful. There has to be more. We need more as fans. We need to see why Matt Hardy is woken. Explain the story. Give us more reason to love it. Give us more reason to want to see more of that. And on to number four. This one is quite awesome. If you understand my wrestling related pun, you know that I'm talking about WWE's The Miz. Former Intercontinental Champion made his return to Monday Night Raw in illustrious fashion in, in quite a nice suit, I might add. With his two Misfits on his left and his right, he cut one of the better promos we've seen in months. In fact, since he's been gone, he then called out Roman Reigns, who, after losing his Intercontinental Championship, beat him down along his Shield members months ago before he went off to film the Marine Six. The Miz is tremendous. He's fantastic. He's, well, awesome! He did everything right, and that's what we needed from The Miz. And even at the end of Raw, when he beat down Roman Reigns, that sold the story even more. We're getting Roman Reigns and The Miz for the 25th anniversary show for the Intercontinental title, that's going to steal the show. And might I add before my producer thinks I'm gonna be just rambling on and on and on and on, like he's nodding his head right now, for the Mixed Match Challenge on Facebook Watch for this new WWE uh, idea, Miz and Asuka are a team and it will be phenomenal. Uh, the Miz is awesome. I, I, AJ's phenomenal. Okay, but together, what's awesome plus undefeated? Phenomenal. Odyssey. What? <laughs> <laughs> With number three comes a consistent part of the show. The WWE still stands for Walk with Elias, but I add one more point, and my producer is going to agree with me. Yup. If we don't get a jam session with The Rock and Elias at Raw 25, I'm going to break this entire set, and you'll see it live. I will punt the Funko Dolls Whoa. to Elias' house where he grew up in yeah, Pittsburgh. Yeah, the one moment that grabbed the number two spot uh, comes from a place uh, mainly out of uh, anger because I didn't include the club in the first episode of Raw Thoughts and in my Fab Five, I thought it wasn't worth it because it may have just been a one-off. Uh, like many other wrestling events in recent history, but this week, and I was waiting for this on purpose, it was worth it. The club took on Jason Jordan, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins in the main event. They had a great segment at the beginning of the show to open it up. I like how it was tiered due to the national championship game. Vince actually knew what he was doing uh, for the first time in probably 25 years. The club makes sense. It's, they're telling their backstory. They even showed pictures of a well-fit Finn Balor and Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows uh, over in Japan. They're really setting the scene and they let them win. And that's the reason, there's another reason why it's not number one, but I'll get to that in a second. They won. They let Seth Rollins take the pin. Jason Jordan doesn't look weak. Roman Reigns will never get pinned in his life. So Seth Rollins was the scapegoat and it worked. It, it really did. Finn looked like a star. Gallows and Anderson looked legit, but not as legit as number one because only one man can tear down a scaffolding by himself. Only one man could pretend he's Batman this week on Monday Night Raw, and just like uh, our EP, Deke, I got kicked off Twitter, said so eloquently, Bane stole the utility belt. He grappling hooked a scaffolding. This is Braun Strowman, the monster among men, if you haven't heard them say it 35 times a night, and ripped it down, I'd say what, Josh, 15 to 20 feet, on to Kane and Brock 
Lesnar. And I, before that even happened, I, I was saying to myself, this episode of Raw was very mediocre. Really nothing happened outside of the club and, and you had Roman and The Miz. It was honestly pretty bad. Uh, not unwatchable, but getting close. Until Braun tore down the scaffolding, it was a moment that wasn't as ridiculous as pushing the ambulance over. It had a sense of realism. He literally grabbed the grappling hook and threw it and literally pulled it down. I, don't, I didn't see a motor to have it come down like you saw the ambulance do, but that it saved the whole episode for me. I thought it, it was tremendous. If Braun does not win the title at Royal Rumble, there is a problem. I mean, Kane has mayor stuff to do. He shouldn't be there anyway, so he needs to go and do his mayor thing in Tennessee. Let Braun be the star. We need a title belt on Raw that isn't an Intercontinental Championship, and it has to be somebody other than Roman. It has to happen. And that kind of leads into my fix it segment for the week, the writing. It just needs to be better. Uh, and I won't ramble on, I, I promise this time. There's no reason Titus Worldwide should lose or should win a match, let alone win a match against Sheamus and Cesaro, who were just granted a title match three minutes before the match actually happened. Uh, there shouldn't be bad writing for Asuka, for Nia Jax, for Alexa Bliss. Jason Jordan doesn't need a script, and I could go on and on and on, and uh, the writing needs to be better, or else the Royal Rumble is not going to be interesting, and I'll leave it as plain and as simple as that. So, from everyone here at Raw Thoughts, that was my Fab Five for the week. Make sure to see us on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, the YouTube. Uh, we might Vine soon. Vine 2's coming out. Uh, are we gonna, is that gonna, are we gonna Vine? Go we're, we're gonna go with it. We might Vine. We'll let you know on the other social media platforms that are already set up in order to do so, so you can follow us on that too. We'll see you next week, but don't forget, we're gonna have Smacked On Live, NXT, the masked man who right now I'm not too happy with. Very efficient, I like it. Can we make that a shirt? He's gonna be giving you some reviews soon from the independent scene. It's gonna be all at one place. Thoughts from the bench. We'll see you next time.